I remember when EA and Ubisoft first announced that they'd be focusing on NFTs for the future of gaming. Most people laughed. Guess who laughs now? Me. Because I just sold a Gold Armor Ronaldo for more money than most people make in one month. And guess what I did with that money? Reinvested. Today, I am honored to announce my groundbreaking innovation in refreshments. Drinkable peanut butter. <music> It's been a fun week for those who've been following Elden Ring. Late last month, it was announced that the game would miss its January 21st release date, which was not even bad news. That was like, hey kids, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna make it there for Easter this year. And we're like, yeah, Uncle Dave, we, we didn't even, honestly, we, we didn't even think you'd make it. So that's, that's fine. Anyway, the new release date is February 25th and the delay was kind of expected in that, officially speaking, there's only been two peeps of Elden Ring to this point. The 2019 reveal trailer and this year's Gamescom gameplay trailer. That's been it. So then this week, Bandai Namco reveals more than 15 minutes of raw, hud gameplay. And I loved it. And yes, I did love 74 seconds in particular, which is what the title of this video implies. Uh, there was just a 74 seconds where I just sat there wide-eyed, fully focused on what was happening on the screen, which is an increasingly rare thing to happen. Now, I don't, I'm gonna do something, this might be risky. I don't know if you'll be as riveted by this as, as I was, but I'm gonna play out the full 74 seconds uninterrupted right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Help me, I'm stuck. Hello? Please, anyone. Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? Put those doubts to rest. I'll be just fine. I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. Ah. Well played, good sir. Well played. Though that mighty wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me. <laughs> And you can stop right there. Stop. I mean, never mind this. This is what obviously sells the game. Sure, I mean, oh God, I'd pay any price. But I want to talk about the 74 seconds leading up to that moment. Because thinking back through all of the gaming events that happened this year, from the very annoying gaming events to the slightly annoying gaming events, none of them had this moment, none of them had a trailer that stirred me as much as this laid back extended presentation. And to be clear, I'm not saying that 74 seconds was the best part of the presentation. That would be this shot right here. Whoa, mama. But I think that 74 seconds is special, noteworthy, remarkable. Today's episode, five reasons why that 74 seconds of Elden Ring is better than any trailer from this year. Number one, Alexander's character design. Imagine something like this popping up in Game of Thrones. Just this sealed up witch's cauldron with gangly arms and legs. It's unmarketable and even worse, unmerchandisable. No face. You can't put this guy in a lunchbox, and you definitely can't put this guy in a YouTube thumbnail. He's an abomination. He's a quirky, thoughtfully designed abomination. And I'd love to meet him. And I know this sounds unprofound, but this is something that only video games let us do. Whatever this is that is happening here, only video games do this. And I mean, okay, I guess technically, if you're like rich, you could pay someone to hide in a cauldron and have this conversation with you. But I guess I would ask like, is that reason, how much does that cost? Number two, the little weapon swap. Just to be clear, no condescension here, but we witness our character suddenly pulling out a giant wooden club. That's a foghorn leghorn move. That is comedic, that is cartoonish. But 
I like that. I like that. Okay, we've got this fantastically, this fully realized fantasy realm, right? We have this deep lore that George R. R. Martin consulted on. Sure, but this is still a goofy video game. We're still playing by video game rules. You still have Mary Poppins pockets. I don't know, something about that weapon swap is reassuring. It's, it's like a relief. It's like a, oh, phew. It's nothing I would have noticed otherwise or demanded, right? It's like, it's like C-3PO in a Star Wars sequel, right? C-3PO is not my favorite guy. I would have never like demanded he appears in the sequels, but there's just something assuring about his presence when he walks into a scene. I don't love him, but I'm still like, oh, phew. Thank goodness. Three, this is unusually good marketing. At the time I'm writing this, the video has over 2 million views and was number one on trending on YouTube. Anyway, the first sequence of the entire preview shows our characters starting off in a safe spot, hopping on a ghost horse, traveling down this path, running into a, a seemingly random dragon, and then having a cool fight with that dragon. That's an outstanding series of events, right? But it is normal. It's expected. You fought a dragon. The second thing, the very next thing in this entire presentation is that interaction with Iron Fist. And there's no even, there's not even a setup, right? There's no narration that's like, you'll interact with a mysterious cavalcade of interesting characters. Do you? And there's no setup. The moment's just allowed to speak for itself. Fade up, here's this thing. Fade down, here's something else. With online video, people are always waiting for any reason to click off. Like, give me, your, give me a reason, I'm ready to move on. And so basically for everything you're doing, you have to front load it with your best stuff or else you might lose your audience. And here in this entire 18 minute demo, the fact that, the fact that this little quaint little 74 second moment is the second thing shown. That is confidence, my friend. That is a marketing team who knows what is good about their video game, that they can let that moment speak for itself. No gimmicks, right? No stupid format that's just there to keep you interested. Number four. I'm very well trained. Souls games are acclaimed for their unforgiving difficulty, their world design, their iconic boss fights, dodge rolls. And because all of those things are so good, the voice acting does go underrated. And strangely, these characters are kind of in a different classification because the dialogue is never there to try to like make you cry at drama or laugh at bad jokes. It's mostly just there to serve in very traditional old school RPG and PC roles. Give hints, trade items, offer quests, deliver lore, or provide flavor. In this scene, Alexander is pure flavor. He's, he's like he's like a spilled over jar of spicy barbecue sauce. Listen to this line one more time. Put those doubts to rest. I'll be just fine. I'm very well trained. From a writer's perspective, that's like it's like seeing somebody perform a tiny little street magic trick and it blows your mind. How do you how does anyone how do you write that? How do you how do you do that? Cauldron man, stuck in ground, asks you to knock him out of the ground says, don't worry about hitting me too hard. I'm very well trained. It's like, that's it. That is a street magic masterpiece. Number five, there is nothing like this. 2022, in terms of video game releases, is going to be unthinkable status, right? It's like starting off with Pokemon Legends Arceus, then Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7's in there somewhere, probably God of War Ragnarok, Probably Breath of the Wild 2, probably Madden 23, probably Starfield, probably Final Fantasy 16. It's just, it's going to be a lot of games. And yet, throughout all of those, I think this is the thing I'm looking for, man. This right here. This cauldron man named Alexander, aka Iron Fist. What's important about talking about this 74 seconds, this scene, right, is the context in which it happens. Because Elden Ring is not a game just about meeting interesting people. Like you could see me praising this moment and you would say, oh, Kyle, reasonably you would think you would love Pixie Paws Pickle Shop, right? It's a game about meeting interesting people. They come to your pickle shop and they have problems and then you determine which vat of goo to dip your pickle into and feed them to solve their problem. You, you would think that and I'd be like, no, it's okay. So whatever I just said is probably, that's probably a good game. But what I find interesting about this scene in Elden Ring, is that this is a huge open world RPG. It is almost how ancillary this most likely optional scene is that I think makes it interesting. To summarize all of the points that I've made today, as best I can, to squish it into one 
minor point. Elden Ring is a 500-person chorus screaming Latin at the top of their lungs, but it is also this sweet little moment. Combined, I believe that we've been provided with enough evidence to conclude that Elden Ring will be the best game of 2022. Sorry, Zelda. That's the late input for this week. I'll be back next Thursday or around then. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Hi, are you Pixie Paw? Nice try, Pixie Paw. I know it's you. Anyways, I've got big problems. My gorgeous husband keeps bumping into the couch. I'll be reading a book, and he'll come into the reading room not looking where he's going, and he'll bump into the couch. I'm like, what the shit? And then he bashfully forgets what he had to say in the first place. It's literally happened four times now. My gorgeous husband is 6 foot 11. He's great to walk around the beach with, but when a man that size bumps into the couch, it's like magnitude 7. I almost fully dropped my book on my lap. Anyways, thanks for listening. A patchy peach pickle, huh? Can't hurt to try. <coughs> wow, this is really good. Pixie Paw, are you single? <coughs> nice try, Pixie Paw. I know you're single. I'll see you at my place later, okay? It's so nice to chill out with another reader. Honey? <coughs> I'm so sorry. Wait, what's going on here? This is Pixie Paw, my new lover. Pixie Paw, why? Is this revenge because I didn't like the angel goo pickle? Nice try, Pixie Paw. I know this is revenge. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Deke, don't. This is not a discussion. You kissed my baby. Now, face my ultimate couch bump.